So I'll, I'm going to give you both of those because I didn't tell you any details because I don't really want to talk about details on, on how all of this worked. Um, but generally, cars get crunched in order to give you time to slow down. They try to make the forces on you small. So A, driver number one is, is taking advantage of whatever engineering uh, feats Ford can do for them because it's a Mustang. Um, so, so the car takes a certain amount of time to come to a halt. That's the amount of time the person takes to come to a halt. Hopefully that's long enough that the force doesn't have to be very big on them. Driver number one, uh, driver number three, what about driver number three? Driver number three takes a really long time to come to a halt. So you might think, all right, that would be excellent. And you would be right, except there are issues with rolling on the ground at that kind of speed. And so, uh, you know, if you're wearing leather clothing and you curl up into a ball and maybe you have something, a helmet to protect your head, then maybe you'll just stand up and walk away. Uh, probably you'd stand up and walk away if, if you were prepared in that kind of way. But, but that requires some luck because you have to miss that post. Why does hitting a post, why is that the big giant problem? It's because you come to a halt in almost no time. In very, very tiny time, you come to a halt, and that means there has to be a gigantic force. If delta t is really small, the force on you that causes that momentum change has got to be really big. Any questions about that one? All right, I hate that one, so let's move on. Um, all right, so I, I mentioned rotations. I, I want to give you an idea of, of, of how rotations are, are really analogous to pay, pay no attention to those words, acceleration, because we're not going to. We're not going to talk about that for a week or two. Um, when we talked about the motion of something, we first identified its location. And then if its location was changing with time, then we said there was a velocity. And if there was a velocity and a mass, we said there was a momentum. We are going to do exactly the same thing with rotations. We said, OK, R is the position. If the position is changing with time, then there's a velocity. And if there's a velocity, then there's a momentum. How do we tell if something is rotating? Its orientation changes. The only way you can really tell that is by pinning something on it to, to at least for something that's uniform like this, so you can't tell necessarily if I've rotated it. I put a mark on it. I'm going to call that z at angle zero when that mark is at the bottom. If I call that zero at the bottom, then what angle is that? Give me a name for an angle that is this approximately. Theta is the name of an angle. How big is theta? If that's theta equals zero, what theta is that? 90 degrees. I would rather you have said pi over 2 radians. But that's okay. They're the same number. It's just that if you work with radians, 
then all of the equations that we write down will always be right. And if you work with degrees, some of them aren't going to be right. So it would be better to think about angles in terms of radians, like what would that be? Pi, two pi, four pi, six pi, eight pi, ten pi. As it goes around, the angle just goes up and up and up. So there's an angle that tells you not about the location of the object. The location of the object is given by a position vector. The angle tells you about the orientation of the object. The rate of change of the angle is the angular velocity. And we're also going to have an angular momentum. We'll have to talk more about rotational inertia next time, but there's a quantity that, that tells you how hard it is to rotate something. Some things are easy to rotate, some things are harder to rotate, and we'll have to talk about why. It just has to do with where the mass is. So I, uh, I put a vector for omega. Omega has a, this, this, by the way, this angular velocity is the Greek letter omega. The little Greek letter omega. It's not a W, it's an omega. I put a vector over that because angular velocity has a direction. I mean, you could look at that and say, well, that has a direction uh, clockwise. And, and there's an opposite direction. You could call that counterclockwise. That's a standard way to refer to it. But these are vectors, and we're going to give them a direction. And the direction we're going to give them is going to be determined by a right-hand rule. So here's your first right-hand rule. Your right hand has uh, fingers and a thumb that are perpendicular to each other. They don't have to be. They could be like this. But make them perpendicular to each other. And the direction of this thing, when your fingers are circling around the direction that this thing is actually going, then your thumb is pointing out toward you. That's the direction that it's, that the angular velocity vector, that's the direction we choose. We choose an angular velocity vector that points toward you. Not surprisingly, what about the angular velocity vector here? Points the other way. If it's rotating the other way, it points the other way. You might say, well, nothing's really moving in those directions. And you would be right. This is not a velocity vector. It's an angular velocity vector. If you want to think about the direction stuff is actually moving, well, over here it's moving down. Over here it's moving up. Over here it's moving to the left. In fact, some piece of this object is has a velocity vector in all directions in this plane. Every direction in, this, in the plane perpendicular to the axis is taken. It's all being used. None of those directions are special. Every one of them, there's a velocity vector. So for angular velocity, we pick a vector that's not in any of those directions in the plane. We pick a vector perpendicular to that plane, along the axis. Um, so I'm only going to ask you this one question. We'll worry about right-hand rules next time. Ladybug sits at the outer edge of a merry-go-round. Okay, that's just a platter that's rotating. So this platter rotates around. Uh, there's a gentleman bug. 
that's halfway between her and the axis of rotation. So this is the, this is the gentleman bug here. That's the lady bug, in case you couldn't tell the difference. Uh, the merry-go-round makes a complete revolution all the way around once every second. The gentleman bug's angular speed is, so angular speed is the change in the angle per unit time. What can you say about the gentleman bug speed compared to the ladybugs? 